thank you very much, uh, Chris. And uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, start my talk uh, by thanking the organizer uh, to give me the opportunity to speak about dilation refrigerators and what do we do at uh, Oxford Instruments. Um, so my name is Alex. Uh, I'll be alone today. Uh, Gustav is sick today, so I'll be on my own. I am um, based in France and um, I will uh, speak about um, proteox dilation refrigerators for uh, quantum technologies. Um, so I will start, let me check if I can uh, click, yeah, perfect. So I will start about uh, with a few slides on uh, Oxford Instruments. Um, Oxford Instruments has um, over 60 years of um, history. Um, the company was founded in 1959 by um, Sir and Lady Wood. Um, it was the first uh, commercial uh, spin-out from Oxford uh, University. Um, and um, here is like a timeline about what happened um, in the in the company. Um, our first factory was this um, garden shed, as you can see on the top left um, corner of the picture. Um, it was um, where Martin built the first um, commercial superconducting magnet. And um, while the company was focused on a magnet application, we also made a history by uh, producing the first uh, world um, uh, commercial deletion refrigerator in 1966. And this one achieved a temperature of um, 200 millikelvin. Um, the company first volume market uh, was NMR, um, but the most successful um, product launch um, came in the 80s um, when we developed the first MRI uh, body scanner. Um, the MRI business, um, it, it propelled the company into a period of um, growth and um, global expansion. Um, and after floating um, on the London Stock Exchange in the 80s, we acquired um, plasma technologies. And in the 90s, we have expanded uh, globally with our office in the US, China, Japan. And we also moved our factory to where it's now, um, in Tubney Woods, uh, very close to um, Oxford, um, just outside the city, basically. Um, so Oxford Instrument Group, we have uh, 28 offices in 18 countries, uh, we have 1800 um, uh, employees and um, apart from our factory in, uh, in Oxford, um, our business unit nanoscience, we have um, several uh, large service centers around the world. Um, the, the office for uh, Europe is uh, in Wiesbaden in Germany. Uh, we have also two service centers in the US, two in China, uh, one in Japan, uh, one in India also, uh, so we can support our um, customers. And we are also setting up at the moment uh, three nanoscience application labs, um, which are located in Oxford, in uh, Shanghai, and in uh, Pleasanton. Uh, in the US. So we, we will be able to work closely with our customer on some uh, collaborative um, projects. So Oxford Instruments, uh, we have nine business units. Um, I am from Nanoscience. Uh, we are working with cryogenics and magnets uh, for quantum computing and uh, physics research. And the other business units, they provide uh, etch and deposition tools uh, for fabrication of semiconductor and quantum uh, materials, detectors, manipulators uh, for electron microscopes. Uh, we also have X-ray tubes for medical imaging and a variety of different uh, microscopy and spectroscopy instruments, including AFM, Raman, and um, NMR as well. Um, about Oxford Instrument uh, and quantum. So we are trying to enable every steps um, of the uh, quantum processes. Uh, for instance, with uh, plasma technology, we have um, clean room tools for deposition and etching. Uh, for the measurement side, we have AFM, uh, EDS, CBSD with uh, Asylum and uh, nano analysis also. Um, we uh, acquired last year or two years ago I don't remember VTEC for uh, Raman spectroscopy and correlative microscopy tools. Um, so at Nanoscience, we are providing the cold environment for device testing and operation. Um, and with Andor, we can provide uh, spectrometers and cameras for um, test uh, of the devices. 
Um, so quantum technology across the group um, with Oxford uh, Instrument Plasma. Um, we have expertise in uh, qubit fabrication um, with uh, plasma technology, um, surface and interface interaction uh, to improve the qubit performance with our asylum research um, atomic force uh, microscopy tool um, about quantum optics as well uh, with Andor. Uh, for detection and characterization uh, um, with the cameras and for nanoscience uh, it's a qubit cooling uh, of course and measurements um, uh, in, in our cryostats. So across the Oxford uh, instrument um, uh, group we are able to address <clears throat> all of the type of uh, qubit technology uh, within our product uh, including uh, superconducting uh, qubits Photonic, cold atoms, topological um, qubits, trapped ions, and uh, spinning qubits as well. Um, so about the dilation refrigerators at Oxford Instruments, um, here's a slide about the history. Um, the first uh, dilution refrigerator was uh, sold in 1965. Uh, it, for, it was the first commercial um, dilution available on the market. And then we had uh, many improvements uh, over the years. Um, and in 2008, we have launched the Triton, which is the dry um, uh, dilution refrigerator. And um, uh, in 2020, we have launched uh, the Proteox. Uh, and it was first delivered good customer in 2021. Here is a slide about uh, the factory. Uh, you can see on the picture um, our factory in Dubney Woods. Uh, we have been investing uh, and upgrading our factory in the last two years. Uh, so it's future proof. Um, we have a scalable testing facility uh, for all the dilution refrigerators. And um, the, you can see on the picture our test bay for the proteoxes. Uh, we can test uh, all the proteox with different uh, customized uh, solution. Um, the entire system is uh, made within the Oxford Instrument factory. Um, so we are making the dilution unit. The, we are also making the superconducting magnets ourselves. Um, and uh, the magnets are fully tested and integrated uh, in the factory. There is um, a virtual visit available on, the, on our website. If you want to take a tour there, you'll see all the, all the parts um, of the factory. Um, so quantum milestones at Oxford uh, Instruments, we have been involved in a, a numerous number of um, high profile uh, partnership uh, and projects uh, in the past uh, a few years. So you can see on this uh, slide, uh, quantum flagship uh, OQC, which is Oxford Quantum uh, Circuits. CQC is also a startup in the quantum field. We work with uh, Rigetti, different universities, and uh, also recently uh, we are part of uh, Chicago um, Quantum Exchange and some different uh, UK projects um, as well. So about like uh, experience working with large scale QIP, so quantum uh, information uh, processing uh, partners. So we work closely with uh, OQC, uh, Oxford Quantum Circuits, um, also with uh, Riketti, uh, as you can see on the slide uh, here. Um, uh, it's uh, the, the, the quantum computer from uh, Oxford uh, Quantum Circuits. Um, it's uh, called Lucy. Um, they have uh, eight uh, quantum processor units in the quantum co uh, computer, um, and it is now live on uh, Amazon Web Service. Um, and you can uh, use the platform uh, if you want to buy time on the quantum computer. Um, we also uh, work uh, closely with Rigetti and one of their system is based at our factory actually in Oxford. And um, um, we have thought of all the backups that are required to keep a system online um, on the cloud. So um, we are trying to maximize uptime for, for the company. So we have large um, experience a, a, in these kind of big systems uh, to be online and available um, all the time. So here's just a slide about some of our customers. So it includes like uh, academic customers, industrial customers, and many uh, startup company working on a uh, quantum technology. So um, after this long <laughs> introduction, let me speak about the, the Proteox itself. Um, so Proteox looks like that. Um, this is the platform. Um, as you can see on the picture uh, on the, let me just show a pointer maybe. 
uh, maybe you can see my pointer. So uh, in the middle, it's the cryostat with the uh, anti-vibration frame. On the right-hand side, you, you can see the gas handling system. And on the left-hand side, you can see um, the control rack where you have your laptop, the magnet power supply, if you have one, all the temperature controllers, and uh, basically all the electronics. Um, this platform is common to the different Proteox we have. Um, you can see on this slide um, uh, the, the current range of Proteox we have. There is uh, Proteox MX. This is the most uh, standard system. Um, it, um, it basically... Um, is very versatile where you can do a lot of things um, on it and uh, it is um, uh, focused on application for condensed matter physics but also on qubit um, qubit development um, then we have like larger system with the which is the proteox elix um, this one is a, a bit more focused on um, scale up so quantum bit um, scale up if you want to uh, um, have a lot of qubits and a lot of wiring uh, and we also have um, the coldest uh, fridge on the market which is the Proteox um, 5 milli k so um, this one is a bit more for fundamental science uh, quantum transport research uh, fractional quantum hall effect for instance um, and the specification of the systems are um, shown here so the mx has um, one pulse tube uh, one secondary insert it has one dilution unit also, um, and the base temperature is less than 10 millikelvin with a, a high cooling power of 12 microwatt um, at 20 millikelvin. Uh, Proteox LX is larger. Uh, it has two pulse tube, uh, two secondary inserts, uh, one dilution unit, but it's a bigger one than on the MX, um, and the temperature that you can reach is below 7 millikelvin. And the cooling power is uh, almost, uh, it's more than double actually than, than on the MX. Um, the 5 milli K, it has also the large installation unit, um, one pulse tube, uh, some uh, line of sight ports, and the base temperature, it's guaranteed below 5 uh, milli Kelvin. Um, and the cooling power is also, uh, also important. So one of the biggest innovation um, uh, going from the previous generation Triton to the next generation Proteox is the concept of secondary insert. Um, so as you can see, um, here's a Proteox MX, here an Alex, and one of the uh, common thing on the two system is the secondary insert. So this is a removable uh, insert uh, and you can, uh, it's a side loading insert. You can remove it from the system um, it's upgradable. You can buy like other signal inserts in the future. Uh, you can have everything you need, all your experiment on this insert. And it's a kind of plug and play insert that you can just go from one system to another one. It's um, cross compatible um, across the range of the Proteox. Um, and it's really future prof uh, when you want to scale up your experiment, adding things, adding components or uh, wiring, for instance. Um, the um, secondary insert, it will be like um, having all your wiring and your experiments. So we know that wiring and a full experimental setup, uh, it can get very heavy. So um, we uh, have designed a Proteox lift. Uh, this is what we call the Proteox lift. And basically you can just come from the side, uh, you load your insert in the system. Um, then you have like a handle where you can uh, push the, the secondary insert um, uh, towards the, the top. And then you'll just have the secondary insert installed in the system. So it's very easy. Um, this is called the secondary insert loader. You can just move around your inserts in the lab. You can have it on a, on, on a table, just work on your configuration. And uh, if, uh, if you have multiple inserts in your uh, lab, then... Uh, many groups can work on the same proteox, just they have their own secondary insert dedicated to their experiment and they can work on the configuration while another group is doing some um, measurements, for instance. Um, it was designed, as I said, for modularity um, and uh, it has a high uh, wiring capacity. So the size of the insert is around uh, 11 by 25 uh, centimeters. This is a uh, full line of sight access. So you can have uh, all the arf lines uh, in your secondary insert. 
uh, the wiring can uh, be completed on a bench, uh, meaning that you no longer have to reach up to your system and solder on the cryostat, for instance, it used to be very painful. And then this can be done with the Segre insert uh, offline now. Um, it's really upgradable, so you can like add some uh, coax lines on it if you want. Um, and as I said, it's compatible across um, the Proteox uh, family. Uh, you can have on the insert um, all the cryoelectronics, for instance, here you can see some isolator uh, at the mixing chamber level. Um, and then we have different options to make it um, <clears throat> very uh, cust uh, customizable. Uh, it's a multi-user system, uh, so you can uh, do whatever you want with it. Uh, we have different options for standard RF wiring. We have high density wiring also. Uh, and on an insert, uh, now with the high density wiring, you could have up to a, uh, 648 RF lines um, on this specific insert. Uh, here is an example of an insert uh, wired for um, a qubit. Uh, you can see some RF lines. They are all on one side of the insert. Here you have an isolator at the mixing chamber level. Um, you have also, uh, here we don't see it very well, but you have um, cryo amplifiers on the 4K stage. Um, and this is ready for uh, uh, qubit and qubit uh, measurements. Um, here is an example of another signal insert. As you can see, everything is on the left. The right hand side is left for um, future upgrades. You still have some space for other experiments. Um, and uh, here you can see the cryo amplifiers on the 4K um, stage. Um, to power the cry amplifiers, you can have the DC loom um, also going in the in the secondary insert. Uh, the isolators are here um, with uh, some proper thermalization uh, copper plates that will uh, um, thermalize the isolator properly to the to the mixing chamber. Um, here on this picture, you can see another one. It's a customized um, secondary insert with a. Uh, some uh, connectors for DC wiring. You can see here a, a high density stick for RF wiring. Um, you can have a lot of uh, wiring on the KF50 port. Uh, here you can see the top end of the secondary insert is very customized with the HD wiring, some connectors for DC, some RFs, and then you still have some space for um, future upgrades um, as well. And here you can see the DC looms. This is the flexible wiring. Uh, going down to uh, uh, crossing all the plates, and it's thermalized also um, at all the plates. So about the MX, <clears throat> this is how it looks like. Uh, you have here the room temperature plate. Um, the first plate is at 60 Kelvin. It is linked to the pulse tube uh, first stage. Uh, the second plate is at 4 Kelvin. This is linked to the pulse tube second stage. Uh, and then you have these three other plates. Um, the, the steel plate, which is like uh, below 800 millikelvin. Uh, the cold plate at 100 millikelvin. And then you have the mixing chamber uh, with a base a temperature of less than 10 millikelvin. And uh, here you can see the dilution unit and the step heat exchanger and the continuous heat exchanger here. Um, it, it As standard, you can have like uh, 140 um, RF lines. The mixing chamber is very large. It's um, 36 centimeter um, diameter. Um, and it's also compatible with uh, all the magnets we offer up to 16 Tesla. Um, we can go more to six, uh, sorry, it's up to 14 Tesla, but we can go more to 16 Tesla if you go for a Proteox Helix. And then we have also a bottom loader system that will uh, uh, help you to cool down the system in eight hours. And it's a very easy way to exchange um, the samples. Uh, let me yeah, um, the full system was also optimized for uh, low vibration. So uh, we have uh, flexible bellows, rubber feet, uh, flexible braiding for the uh, pulse tube attachment to the plates. Um, also, the solid pump line uh, is anchored to the floor. We used to have flexible pump line on the Triton, but now uh, it's solid and it's uh, really like a um, uh, bolted to the floor or to the wall just to dump the vibrations. Uh, then the plates are also thicker. Now it's eight millimeter plates on the system. Uh, and we have also option for active vibration damping um, if you need. So here's the Proteox lift I, I was speaking uh, about earlier. Uh, you can move around the secondary insert. Um, and then you also have some different adapters like you can see here on the picture. And then it's very easy just to uh, dismount the system 
uh, change your sample and uh, mount it back to start cooling again. Um, these adapters are fitted for the cans, uh, the external cans, but also for all the shields that are inside the system. Um, and uh, it has also, I don't think we see it on this video, but we have also an adapter for the magnet. So everything was made for um, operation uh, by only one person so in, a, in a, with a safety uh, basically if you have one student in the lab in the night he can do everything by himself um, with this uh, with this lift uh, the alix is the bigger one uh, as i said before we have the place for um, two secondary inserts the mixing chamber is uh, much wider it's 53 centimeters uh, you can have a lot of rf lines you can go up to 1200 rf lines if you um, uh, go for high density wiring and you use the two secondary inserts and you have also other ports like 10 non-line of sight ports for uh, dc wiring this is kf50 ports and each port is uh, capable of having uh, 96 um, dc lines um, so if you want to scale up and you'll have a lot of qubits you can go for the elix um, the um, cooling power is 25 uh, microwatt and 20 milli kelvin base temperature below 7 milli k um, and you have the option to have uh, what you want for the pulse tube like you'll have two pulse tube and you can go up to a 2.5 watt uh, per pulse tube uh, we have also like the mixing chamber that you can control in temperature if you want to go higher for some reason you can go up to 30 kelvin um, uh, in a very precise manner uh, to control the temperature so about proteox applications um, so i spoke about quantum computing uh, with a lot of rf lines um, capable uh, mixing chamber for the MX is large. You can have up to 66 liters of sample volume. Uh, so it's a very large volume. It's even more on the Proteox Helix and you have a, a high cooling power and a base temperature of 10 milli Kelvin. Um, for condensed matter physics, you can have a, a magnet in the system. Um, you can have also a bottom loader uh, in the system. So if you need to exchange the sample uh, more often, uh, we have also some options for uh, low noise uh, DC filters, for instance. Uh, you can have a lot of different configuration um, if you're working in condensed matter physics. Um, for quantum optics, we have also some uh, options where you can have uh, direct access to the sample through some windows. You'll have the windows uh, crossing the shields and you'll have a direct path to the sample um, through these windows. Um, if you want, you can also work with optical fiber. So we'll bring the optical fiber from the sample to the room temperature flange. Um, it will be thermalized to all the plates. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's a low vibration system. So it's, um, it's uh, suitable for um, uh, quantum optics uh, experiment. So in terms of magnets and loaders, um, when you are um, uh, doing some magnetic field experiment, uh, we can provide some different kind of magnets. We have um, vector magnets um, from uh, 911. This is like the highest field we have at the moment for uh, vector magnets. So nine is uh, always in the vertical direction. And in X and Y, you can have one Tesla. Uh, we have other configuration like a 611, for instance, um, 621, 622, or a 3, a 6, a 3, and 1.5 um, Tesla. Uh, and all these magnets, they have large bore. It's 90 millimeter bore. Um, and this is uh, compatible also with uh, our bottom loading system. Um, in terms of solenoids um, you have um, from one tesla with large bore to a 14 tesla um, um, on the on the solenoid on the vertical direction these ones are a bit uh, different for the magnet bore sometimes it's large sometimes it's a bit smaller so but they are all also compatible with our different uh, kind of bottom loaders um, we also have um, like um, possibility to have non-standard magnets so 
If you want to go to 16 Tesla, for instance, on an LX, it's possible. If you want higher homogeneity on the field, that's also possible. You can have higher persistence. You can have uh, cancel magnets. So we used to uh, um, have this magnet with the option of what we call active shield. So you'll have uh, extra coils on the system just to decrease the magnetic field on the mixing chamber. It will also decrease uh, your stray field around in the lab uh, if it's needed. Um, and we, we have a lot of different uh, customized options for the for the magnets um, since we build it in-house since uh, more than six years. Almost anything is possible. <laughs> the bottom loader, this is the option I, I spoke about before. Um, this is when you want to exchange the sample. Uh, um, quickly, um, and if you are exchanging the sample oftenly, uh, this is the standard insert that is dedicated to the bottom loader option. Uh, here is the uh, the bottom end of the, the, the secondary insert. You can see the docking station with all the RF lines coming there. You have also the DC line. So everything will, um, all the wiring will stop here at the base of the bottom um, uh, loader docking station. Um, and then you'll be able to cool down in, uh, in less than six hours. Um, I think we guarantee eight hours, but it's around uh, six hours usually. Um, and uh, you will have uh, in the in the bottom of the system you will have a sample puck so this is what we called our sample puck this is where your sample uh, will be installed uh, you can use like the copper um, grids like with the tapped holes to install any kind of sample holder and then this part will plug in the in the bottom loader and all the rf lines and dc lines will be uh, connected to the system um we have also like a shield around the sample pack uh, we warranty like uh, increasing temperature of only two millikelvin uh, so if the mixing chamber is 10 like in the sample pack you'll have uh, below 12 millikelvin temperature uh, it's a quick and easy to use um, it takes less than 10 minutes uh, to exchange um, the sample pack you can ground all the pins during the loading um, of the of the sample pack um, and uh, everything is optimized uh, to minimize the, the quench forces. Um, on 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 uh, on this slide, you can see. Uh, sorry. Yeah, on this slide, you can uh, just give me a second because I have some. Yeah, sorry, I had the the, the music. Uh, so on this slide, you can see how you uh, uh, install the bottom loader. As you can see here, we have the system is outside of the system, and and here you have the flaps um, crossing the different uh, cans, and you just like push the sample pack inside the system, and you can do this while the system is cold. Um, it's manual you can just fill everything it's easier and you can just push the sample pack you will dock it to the docking station then you will just like uh, screw the bolts and uh, at the end you close the valve and you can remove the bottom of the part and your sample pack will be in um, and it will take uh, around uh, six hours um, to cool down to base temperature uh, in your system uh, for this option, you need um, obviously a bit uh, higher seating in your lab, uh, around 3.5 3 meters uh, to have this option. In terms of Proteof software, we have also redesigned uh, everything. Now it's a web-based um, software. Uh, it's platform independent. Um, and uh, you can access it through a standard web browser. You can use VPN to control your fridge uh, from a distance. Um, and uh, the, free, the, the computer inside the, the control rack is just to control the system and send some instruction. But we have an industrial Unix um, system um, inside, this, uh, inside the, the control rack. Um, that's the, the core of the part that will um, uh, uh, control the system. Um, it's also like a multi-user um, um, software and uh, multi-platform. If you have multiple fridges in your lab, you can uh, also control um, them all. Um, in terms of um, visualization, we work now with uh, Grafana and um, you have a nice uh, interface and you can also export all your uh, data in uh, open formats um, and you can like work on your data later on. 
we also uh, provide an API uh, so you can if you're used to work uh, with Python scripts or a lab view uh, you can use it we will provide um, all, all the uh, things that are necessary for you to integrate uh, within your experiment um, in terms of service um, the Proteox is a 2.5 years maintenance free system so um, uh, it was redesigned that way so you have um, long uptime you don't need to do a lot of maintenance on the system and if you have long experiments sometimes you will have a device uh, that will be interesting and you want to do a long experiments uh, you can go up to 12 months uh, running the fridge at uh, base temperature um, and uh, we have also some um, bypass for the um, condensing pump so you can also increase um, the service intervals and for the pulse tube you can go up to 30,000 hours uh, without servicing um, the system so we also launched uh, live assist so we <laughs> launched that during covid because it was very difficult to uh, to travel to customers this is a um, um, virtual reality system where uh, we can help you from a distance uh, and tell you like uh, what to do, what to push, what to do on the system uh, if we cannot travel for uh, any reason. Um, this has been a success during COVID. It was very important for us to be there for our, our customers uh, during that time where nobody could um, travel, uh, basically. Um, I have a few extra slides. A um, few links, um, so um, you can take a look to uh, the quantum ecosystem website. Uh, on this website, we're mentioning basically what we are doing to support um, quantum. Um, we also have a website where we're speaking about the projects we have at the moment. Um, you can also take a look at that. And um, there is also a link on the what um, Oxford is doing to uh, trying to reduce the environmental impact of our products uh, because as you know um, a dilution refrigerator needs a lot of um, uh, electricity water cooling so many things to make it run so that's also a question uh, to think about um, how to optimize uh, all that um, and uh, yeah we um, have a website for our um, job offers we are always hiring so just feel free to go on the website or drop me an email we are uh, always um, looking to um, to hire um, and uh, that's it i would like to thank you for your uh, attention um, and uh, let me know if you have uh, questions Yes, hello. Thank you for a very good good uh, talk. So, do we have any discussions? Uh, any any top any questions that us uh, that are, are bothering us? Maybe I will have a first question. So, uh, so there is a possibility of approaching quantum technologies when you use rapid single quantum flux electronics coupled to flux qubits, flux superconducting qubits. And you can place the system to dilution refrigerator. So, but still there is some level of heating up. So, uh, so it, was any of your client is using such type of configuration, like flux superconducting qubit coupled to rapid single quantum flux electronics? That's a very good question, and I wish Gustav was there because he I'm would here. be. Oh, you're here, Gustav! <laughs> wow, <laughs> that, that's cool. I sneaked in. <laughs> okay, that's good. Thanks a lot. So that's a question for you. Uh, so maybe I should. What was the question? If it was specific to flux qubits, uh, um, or superconducting qubits in gen in general, I guess was. No, no, no. The question was. You have, you know, superconducting rapid single quantum flux electronics, right? That just, they push fluxons across the circuit. So this is class implementation of classical super, uh, classical computer in superconductor. And this electronics can interact with superconducting flux qubits. And that those experiments has been already done, uh, like by Karlsruhe and other institutes. And the question is, is 
Is your electronics able to cool down the system to sufficiently low temperatures? Because such system is expected to, to generate certain level of heat. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, so if it's if if it's um, if it's if it's electronics dissipating heat at four Kelvin, primarily, then it basically just boils down to uh, it's the same problem as cooling down an FPGA, for example, which p people generally uh, install at four Kelvin. Uh, it's well, it's down to pulse tube power, so that's that's not an issue. There, there's some some of our customers are playing around with high dissipative powers at, at millikelvin temperatures too but um uh that's yeah i mean we the, the cooling power is certainly there for it so i think the rest of it was well, it's, it's more about you know thermally anchoring wires and uh, and things like that um so we we, we do work with a number of people who uh, who pro provide cold electronics and we help customers integrate cold electronics in our systems um the but uh i don't think we have looked specifically into maybe the the various types of uh, used for flux for for, for flux qubits uh, uh devices uh but certainly the cooling power is there for it but i'm not i'm not sure i answered your question <laughs> well, well 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 let's say of course existence of superconducting flux qubits uh, i mean oper it, 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 it's operational capabilities appear in a range of like 100 milli Kelvin more or less so 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 that that, 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 that was the question if if, if, if there isn't um, and there is certain um, usage of, of, of power by uh, by um, rapid single quantum flux electronics so there's so, some level of power dissipation but anyhow somehow I believe that your device is probably cooling device is able to maintain the I don't know, 100 milli Kelvin temperature of such structure, probably. Yeah, so we 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 can provide up to almost a milliwatt of power at the <clears throat> at 100 milli Kelvin. If you uh, so so, I would say up to up yeah dissipations up to around a milliwatt. If you if you just want to maintain 100 milli Kelvin, then don't really need the 10 milli Kelvin. Then that's that's relatively straightforward. We have sort of off-the-shelf solution for that. If you want to go significantly above that number, then yeah, I would say within a factor of two, there uh, it's still within our technical capability, sort of thing. Um, if you were to venture outside, you know, above a couple of milliwatts, then you're into territories where there isn't really. I don't. I don't think there is a. a a dilution, a solution based on dilution unit, the dilution cooling today. But uh, yeah, that's probably where the threshold is. A milliwatt is fine. But then, but then there's the question, right? It's one thing, it's one thing just having the cooling power, but uh, you need to thermally anchor things in such a way that you don't get significant temperature gradients uh, as well. So that's, that's the other side of equation. I see. Okay, maybe second question of that type. Quite recently, there is increasing fashion in usage of cryogenic CMOS, cryogenic semiconductor CMOS for uh, the purpose of, of, of qubit implementation. But somehow, uh, somehow, of course, uh, there is much decrease of, of, of currents that, that, that flows via CMOS. Nevertheless, there is certain non-zero power usage or power dissipation. Yeah, and, and also there is a question: Is is any of your clients is using this dilution refrigerator for uh, study of uh, cryogenic CMOS physics or whatever? <laughs> uh, yes, we have people who look into CMOS. Can I think of names on top of my head? Uh, that's the challenge. Uh, I think there's some in the UK. I'll probably. Yeah, if you want, if you want like a couple of references to people who do that on Proteox or on the previous generation Triton, uh, I'm I'm sure I can find a few. I can't think of any names on top of my head now, but uh, uh, but yeah, I mean their their requirements are in terms of dilution fridge requirements. It's there's nothing really significantly different to what what those people do as far as. As far as I've understood it, it's got more to do with the kind of wiring that they want us to install. Some of it is a little bit maybe non-standard, but um, um, 
the cryogenic performance is, is, is very similar. Okay, I see. Uh, do we have more questions from the audience or from Zoom audience as well? All right, so let us uh, thank the speaker again. Yeah, and now we have uh, 